right? So this is how functional components work. And this is why you are also able to use const within the functional components because it does not mutate the variable. It actually creates a whole new function. Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at one of the most important things I believe you should know as a React developer that how functional components actually work in React. Now, now I'm not talking about how to write components, but internally in React, what is happening when you use a functional component? And we'll take a look at how they differ from a class-based component as well. So this is gonna be a very, very, very informative video for all those React developers out there. So make sure you watch it till the end. Also, if you're new here, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel to keep on receiving such quality updates on a daily basis on CodeDam. This video is a part of CodeDam's t-shirt giveaway program for the month. If you want to take part and win an amazing CodeDam t-shirt, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video about what you think and that's it, you are eligible. If your comment gets a heart from CodeDam, you will win a t-shirt for absolutely free. All right, let's start with React Functional Components. So React Functional Components was not the cool way to do components as long as there was not hooks, the concept of hooks introduced in there because there was no state, right? But when the concept of hooks was introduced, then you can create actually functional, truly stateful components in React by just using function. Before that, we had to use class. Let's say this is your component like this in React where we have a simple button, a state, and on clicking this button, we just have the counter incrementing, right? Now, what I want you to understand is what exactly happens when you click on this button. So what React does internally is, obviously, if you have all also displayed this counter somewhere, you will see whenever you click on this button, the counter will increase from one, two, three, four, and so on. So you can see, you can clearly see X is changing, right? But this sounds a bit weird if you are seeing this for the first time and you see that you're using a const modifier here for declaring this X variable, right? That means you technically cannot do X equal to two, but you know, X equal to three or X equal to four. You cannot do this stuff. This is not allowed because you are using a const. That means this X cannot change value. And sure enough, we don't even do that ourselves, but does React internally, can it do that? Well, of course not because React is part of JavaScript. This is JavaScript, this is React. So obviously it cannot break the rules of JavaScript itself. So what React actually do in this case, when you're using a functional component is that it calls this function again, but with a new X value. Now, let's see how that happens. So the way I like to imagine this is in a form of a React universe, right? So React has a small universe of its own where all these functional updates reside. Now, let's say this is the first function, which function render, which has happened right on the screen. So this is the very first render. That means you're seeing a zero on the screen and X is also zero in this React functional call, right? So the moment you click on this button, you know, you click on this, this function gets executed. And what this is doing is that within that React universe, it's going to create another function, another new function. It's gonna call this function again, but what's gonna happen is that this time, when this function is getting called, this x comma set x, you know that this set x is gonna receive a function anyway from you state, but this function gets called in a similar way right? This is the exact same line which happens as well. The only difference is in this universe, in this function of the universe, this expression right here returns zero, but in this universe or this iteration, this expression right here returns you a one instead of a zero, which makes all the difference, right? One comma the function basically, because then the x becomes one and then set x becomes something else, right? So now in this part of the universe, the x value is one, and then of course you have the set x as a function modifier as well. So what's essentially happening is every single time you call this set modifier, React renders that function again as a different part in the same universe and then replaces the use state value with a new one. Now why this is important? This is important because you can very easily perform some weird behavior, especially when you use use effect or stuff like that. So we'll discuss about use effect later, but what we can discuss right now is that this use state right here, you can see can now work 
even with following the JavaScript rules. Why? Because you can see I'm not mutating the value inside a function. I'm actually rendering a whole new function, right? And whatever this is returned, whatever this function returns in the second iteration, that actually gets created as a React, you know, new DOM, right? So if this func this was the function which called it, it's gonna be replaced and this new, this new function right here, which had x equal to one value would be created. And then this would be compared with the original DOM on the screen and React will say that, hey, we have update to this particular node, therefore DOM, please go ahead and update this. And this will appear on the screen for the user, right? So this is how function components work. And this is why you are also able to use const within the function components because it does not mutate the variable. It actually creates a whole new function. There are very interesting use cases which happen when you use, for example, like I said, when you, when you start using use effect and use effect plus set interval or set timeout. When you use this stuff, you actually understand how this behavior really works, how this transition really happens in, from one function to another and so on. But yeah, this is something for another day, maybe a bit of more practical instead of this theoretical understanding. But yeah, I mean, I, I hope that you got the idea how React functional components actually work. On every single state update, they create a new function, they never reuse the previous one, right? In an ideal world, this previous function should be destroyed and, you know, garbage collected and all that stuff. But a lot of times, like I said, this is one of the clearest examples where you can, you know, just have this zombie function sitting right here, eating some variables, some memory resources, even running some side effects, possibly. So you don't want to do that. But yeah, like I said, that will involve a lot of use effect and, you know, some tricks and tips. So maybe that's something for another video. That is all for this video. Hopefully you understood how to work with React and how React components really work, React function components. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one.